hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel today we're going to do another podcast of gilded age we're doing season two episode two i know you guys watched it i know you saw that ending let me know what you think let's get into it okay and you guys remember that guy who i told you his daughter was actually at the party and he was a servant at the same party that his daughter was invited to and she gave him like that really weird look. Well, he's back and here is a bit of his story. He doesn't go into a whole lot of detail because you can tell he's still trying to like kind of cover up some things, but he did say, he did kind of hint as to why he was there in the first place. So his son-in-law comes soliciting him at the Russell's house, asking about him to the servants. And of course, this raises a red flag because why is this high society guy asking around for servants? And then they're, and then he's like, I'm looking for so-and-so. And it's not even the guy's name. He has like an entire different identity. So he gives them this whole spiel about he went off into the war and how He's had a completely different life now and he doesn't he doesn't give too many details as to if he wants to be included in high society or not. I don't know if he gets the impression there's no going back for him, but they don't even elude to like welcoming him back in. It's almost like they're looking for him to keep him quiet. So in this episode, they give us a tennis match, which is really really rich people playing tennis in Newport. But during the tennis match, Marion is actually on a date. She was set up and this guy is not a keeper. Oh my God, he came drunk, he stayed drunk, and he left drunk. Like she was spending the majority of her time trying to maneuver and get out of his grasp. Because you know Marion, she's not really looking to marry high society if she does then that's fine with her that's the vibe i get from her but luckily she's starting to hit it off luckily she's starting to hit it off with a new character and they had a blast like he bet on who would win the tennis match based on who she chose and they won they had like these cute little moments and yeah the drunk guy who marion despises is really liked as a potential is really liked as a potential suitor by Agnes, of course, because of his family's socioeconomic standing in the old school New York upper elites. And so meanwhile, back in New York City, Gladys is torn and devastated and confused about the entire proposal she got last episode from Oscar, which, which he mentioned being a henpecked husband and her having a up from under the restraints of her mom, Bertha Russell. All that sound very, very good to Gladys, but of course, dad knows this is all too good to be true. And it's all sugar, it's all sugar plums and fairy tales when you're talking to like a 15 year old girl about marriage. So she's torn and she's got all these mixed feelings about Oscar and she doesn't actually love him, which we kind of already know that but she is so young and so impressionable. He made such a great impression on her. She was actually like entertaining the idea of having a loveless romance with Oscar, which the dad, and I'm on the dad's side with this, he definitely told her that's a bad move and he supports her in her decision to marry for love instead of how her mother wants to do it, which is to marry for status and most of the people within the the whole uh, show of guilt the gilded age show they know oscar is very he's very much not who he appears to be but for some reason gladys it hasn't sunken in to her yet she still describes him as and i quote a very amusing man and makes her laugh like that's she was going to get get married based on that she actually thought marriage was going to be like her independence to her mom her dad had to actually tell her you don't go into a marriage 
looking for freedom kind of needed this to happen because I feel like we're seeing Gladys grow up a lot this season. Gladys is the same actor from American Horror Story. Down that proposal hurt Oscar's feelings shortly thereafter and I doubt we will be seeing a continuation of this romance. It's our little brother Larry. He's got a new employee who is like into him and I don't mean like giving him extra attention and guidance trying to like hone his skills and talents. She like wants him in a very sexual way. She's this older, very pretty widow. Of course, from she's, she's coming from money. She appears to be very friendly too, so I'm not mad at it. Mad at it, his mama is mad at it. So Bertha waits up for him after a long night out with his employer, who he's also taking a pound town and you know they're having a discussion discussion she's telling him how there's plenty of young girls out here you don't have to be with the widow she's old enough to be your mom and he pretty much tells her whoa 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 pump your brakes those girls are not putting out this woman is over here giving me the she's giving me the buns over here and you want me to just let that go mama that's not gonna happen you're putting it out and putting it down on me and this is where I'm gonna stay mama so Peggy is back on 61st Street with Agnes and the rest of the ladies everybody's pretty excited about this move Peggy is excited which is the most important part because she's got you know you guys know she's got like a lot going on if y'all don't know what Peggy has going on go ahead and listen to the previous and check out the previous uh, episode the podcast that I did on that strong who doesn't like Peggy because of the color of her skin and it shows and it makes a lot of people uncomfortable so Peggy complains to Agnes and of course Agnes has to step in because this woman is like her um her first maid or whatever it's called so this lady actually goes back and forth with Agnes about being I was about to say the word she actually goes back and forth with Agnes about disliking Peggy because of her skin color. That's a big no-no. So she goes to sit down and now she knows you don't give Agnes orders. Agnes gives you orders, dear. And so later we observe the other servants embracing Peggy. Meanwhile, Armstrong is there being way too strong in the arms and in the ideology and refusing to even engage with her. But that all changes when Peggy actually does some of her sewing work for her and she does a magnificent job and it's like, oh, well, now I have to acknowledge you because you helped me. So it gets Boombastic side eye, but I guess this is a step in the right direction. This episode that Peggy was trying to get a seat at the Academy Opera House, but they wouldn't get her off the waiting list because, you know, politics and whatnot. And this is something that would put her at the forefront of like high society, which is pretty much her goal in life. I don't like that for her. I feel like she's so much better than that. There's a party thrown, who's this opportunity at the party to kind of try to get people on their side and join the Metropolitan Opera House, the new Opera House. And guess who shows up with a rich husband who nobody really knows anything about? It's crazy as Turner from last season. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I remember Turner trying to sleep with George Russell and she was always just extremely weird to the entire Russell family. Well, actually was. But I know she and Oscar, those two were in cahoots to like, scam or something. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the previous. I'll have to go back and research that, but I know the both of them were like really seedy and just sinister and underhanded characters. Of the episode, nothing was really said by Turner other than like, okay, we'll be right back or something like that. But the entire Russell family, oh yeah, they look like they saw a ghost, especially Bertha. I believe her exact words were, nobody say anything until I tell you what to say. Until like 10. This is a strong like 
probably 7.5. It wasn't a whole lot of drama, but when it got to the drama, it was very significant. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section, and we'll get back to it next week. See ya! May I present Mr. and Mrs. Winterton.